My name is <coughs> Spencer Joaquin Afflaguitori. I'm 88 years old, born March 3rd, 1933. And uh, I was originally born in Hagatna, Guam, but I live in uh, a place called uh, Flinaguajo or Machanano, Guam, which is the northern part of Guam. Uh, we, was, <clears throat> we were in, a, in my house in, the, in, a, in, a, in a San Antonio, and I got in a, we were at the church. We went to Mass on that Sunday morning. And we heard this. <clears throat> we never hear a plane flying be, uh, before that. And when a plane fly over, it's a, it's a sound that you never heard. I mean, you hardly hear. So we were surprised. We heard a whole bunch of airplanes flying over on the, uh, south of the church. So we, most, some of the people ran out of the church to see, to look at the, to the airplane. But my mother won't let me run out of the church. So she kept me going. Then about a few minutes later, we heard this boom, boom, boom going on further, far, further uh, uh, south of us. And then about 10 minutes later, <clears throat> we got uh, somebody from uh, uh, I think from the com commissioner uh, running down the road, but, um, uh, they, they, uh, they bombarded Shumai. They bombarded Shumai. So my mom, uh, there was me, my, my two sisters, and my youngest brother, my brother, packed us. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. So she packed a little bit of our clothes, and we walked from there to first. We walked from I don't know how we got to Tumon, and we went to Tumon there, and then from there we stayed maybe. Oh, I can remember we stayed at some, somebody's house for a couple of hours, and then about four, I, I don't remember the time, but closing to evening, my, my brother, my oldest brother came and with, a, with the caravan cart that we have, and they took us from that house up to the, out to the ranch in Machanano, which is about, about from there to the, it's about 15 miles. And we rode in there and took us home to the Machanano. And good thing we did because Japanese uh, uh, landed in Tumon Bay about three miles from where we were at at the time. So we, that's, that's, uh, that's how I, we got away from, 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 the, from the landing, from the Japanese landing. And then, and then after they land, the uh, Japanese interpreters that came with the Japanese came up to our places. Uh, all, the, all the men and women, 15 and over, have to report to the school. To sign, to sign their name. I was only nine years old then at the time, so I didn't have to go. But my older brother and sister have to register at the school for the Japanese. But then we, about a couple of months later, after everything settled down, the Japanese school, um, Japanese start to open their Japanese school, and everybody is required, every nine-year-old have, uh, have to register for school as well. Then I, of course, being, I was uh, nine, I have to, I have to register for school, so I, I went to Japanese school. When uh, the time we were going to school, the, the way there was uh, several several kids from the, from where I live that uh, live uh, a little bit further from where I am at that, that, that walked to from our house to the to the school. So every morning I will the, I will wait on the road, which is a little bit about uh, maybe about. Uh, quarter of a mile from, from my house to the road and we'll wait for the rest of the school which is live a little bit further further away from from uh, further north from where we're at and we'll wait for them. We'll all gather and we we'll all together walk to, to the school. And uh, uh, at that time there was no type of transportation, no bus, no no any kind of vehicle, no bicycle, anything. We walk. So we walk for all the kids and several maybe 15, 20 kids from from that area all the way up, we, all of us, we walk that uh, from my age, nine up to about 15, 16, 15 year old, we all walk together to, to the school in the morning and then after school, we all walk back, we walk back to, to our house uh, every, every day. And uh, as far as uh, lunch is concerned, uh, sometimes uh, during those days, we don't bring lunch. Uh, we manage to eat whatever the the school have, and sometimes my brothers and sisters, the older ones, uh, if they have anything available at the house, they bring you know bring it over to to the uh, to the school to, to to feed us. But other than that, that's that's uh, how how we do on a day to day to day basis. Uh, well, other than going to school for the Japanese, uh, my dad, like I said, we're farmers. 
after we go to school in the morning and the, and the Japanese put us to work in the field in the afternoon. After we go home, we, have, we go and I do my chores, feed the chickens and uh, with, with uh, the, you know, that, the, that uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, told us to do the chicken ranch that I have to, to feed the chicken that were there. So I do that. And then whatever other farm, farm chores that we have to do, or oh, chicken and the pigs. We got pigs that we have to, uh, to, uh, to feed. So my, my older brothers and I will go to, the, to our, far, um, our farm and pick up all the, co the ripe coconuts so we can cut, cut them up open and then take the, the, the coconut meat um, or come to it, uh, grind it, and so that my mother uh, can get the, the meat and squash it and get the uh, uh, milk out of it to make oil. And the, the, the remaining of the coconut, we put it in a separate can so we can put that with other, we, we go and pick up a papaya, a wild papaya, we cook that, and then we mix it with, with the coconut so we can feed it to the pigs. So those are the chores that we do every day. So uh, after school, like I said, we go home and take care of our chores. So those are the, so the daily chores that we do. As a nine-year-old, I help my brothers and, uh, you know, uh, to, to do those things. Only once in a while when, when the Japanese, like I said, the Japanese bring, bring in, uh, I'm brought in from, from Saipan, uh, Chamorros that are living in Saipan who are Chamorro Japanese that speak Chamorro and Japanese as well. So they brought him on as an interpreters. And we know some of these Chamorros because some of them are re relative of ours. So when they come to us, we speak to them and they explain what the Japanese wants to know, what the Japanese need need for us to do for them. And uh, if they want something for the ranch, like food or chicken or what have you, they say, okay, they want this, they want that. So my dad and my brother will go and catch the pig or catch the chicken or get the, the food that they, that they need and we will, they will give it to them. So those, and I will, I, will help, I will help with that. And there are times when they would give, give my dad uh, maybe a, a pound of rice and things uh, you know, for in in exchange for the for the goods that they wanted. But there are times that they didn't do anything. They just uh, this is what they want and they get it and that that was it. We were I remember remember we were told to uh, go uh, to go to the concentration camp. Uh, I don't know who came to the ranch and says, everybody pack your things and you have to go because we have to, we have to go to move to, uh, to Maningun. So my, my mom uh, told my older brother, his name is Jesus, he says, take your brother and don't let him go, don't let him, don't let him go anywhere, don't lose him. So he took my hand and we, we walked from Machanano and first stop is that, uh, is that uh, Dedido, uh, yeah, Dedido, and we stayed there. Uh, for a couple of hours and wait, we wait for the people's jiggle. And we, from, from, from that point on, we march on up Macheche Hill. We do most of this, we walk all the way up. And then we, we stayed at, uh, at uh, Manila, at, uh, at the now Father Duenas Memorial School ground. All that area is full of people from Machanano, Dedido, and Jigo. That's the overnight stay. The people were packed all over there. My brother and I made a, we got a, a, a coconut leaf put on the ground and we, we slept there overnight. Early in the morning, the, uh, the uh, people that, uh, that's in charge of the group said, okay, we're ready to, to roll out or to move. So we marched there from, from, the, from uh, Father Drenner's Moore School ground. We marched from there all the way up to Jonah, past Jonah, down the hill into the, we crossed two rivers. We crossed through, I remember crossing two rivers. My brother will hold my hand and he'll lead me across this, I think, uh, Paugo, Paugo Bay River and Manengun River, I think. We, we crossed two rivers on foot until we uh, finally come to a place in Manengun. I remember we came to a, in Manengun, there's a, right on the, in the valley, there's a mango tree. I remember the mango tree. And we, uh, my brother and I, we stayed there and, and underneath the mango tree for maybe an hour until they find up says, okay, the people from Machanano will stay at a certain place near the, near the river. So all the people from Machanano will stay on a certain pla one place, the people from Dedido and people from Jigo and further, you know, separate them in a different place near the river. So my brother and I, 
and, and my family was, they put, I took a spot near the river and we cleared the grounds because there was nothing there, there's nothing but weed and jungle. So we cleared it out and we uh, spread out banana, uh, coconut leaf so uh, uh, we can, you know, for we can uh, lay down and sleep. And then we gather woods for my mom to cook, to build out the fire for to cook whatever food. So my older brothers, like my, my brother Joe, John, and Sue, they're older than me. Uh, they would, uh, we were there for several weeks, I think. And so every week, my father, my brothers will walk from Maningun to Machinano to pick up some food from the ranch, like bananas, the whatever rice left over, and they pick up some chickens, live chickens, and so to bring up to to the to Maningun so, so that we can. I prepared them for for our food while we're there, so that's how we so how we survive until the day came when when the American troops. I remember the American troops came and uh, the, I can remember this one tall tall American Marine came over to our camp. He says, "Okay, get all all you can carry and let's go and follow follow us." And we we we're moving out of here. So I remember that. And we followed these Marines up across the river, up a mountain across. All I remember is walking up across the mountain, keep on walking and walking and walking. And I don't remember how long we walked. And until we come to, uh, I think on the other side of the mountain, we have to stop overnight and rest. And then following morning again, we start walking and then we end up at the, uh, on the place up right above the Pigo Cemetery. And that's some of us, but uh, we say, okay, uh, you, you make a, there's a trail that you make a right turn and the rest of them went straight ahead. So my group, our family and my group and the rest of us, we make a right turn. That ends us up at the Pigo Cemetery. The other people that went straight ahead, they went and went to Agate. So we were lucky enough that we didn't have to go to Agate. We went to, to the cemetery. So uh, the cemetery at the time, I, I didn't remember it being a cemetery until later on in the, in the next uh, few years later on, I remember there was cemetery where we were encamped. The Chamorro would build small camps uh, with coconut, coconut leaf on one side of the cemetery and that's where we stayed there for several weeks. That's where, where we, my mom fixed a little place and a little shack that we can manage with coconut leaves and we stayed there for, like I said, maybe a week or two until my father was allowed to travel to, from there to up to Machinano to prepare for the ranch. And as soon as my father was able to leave and go to the ranch, he and my brothers went up there and prepared the ranch. And then as soon as they were given permission, because they were not, they were still Japanese up in that area. Japanese moved from, came moving north, came moving north. As soon as it's free and, and safe to move up north, my father moved up to prepare, uh, prepare the ranch for us to move. So when they, when they get the, when the United States soldier gave the permit for us to move, my father packed us from the, from the, the tent that we were living at the, uh, by the cemetery and moved us all to the ranch and we, we started living at the ranch from then on. <laughs>